Good afternoon, my name is Brian Grimkowski. I'm one of the assistant directors of graduate admissions here at William Patterson University. Want to take a moment to thank all of you for taking time out of your schedule this Friday to join us um, for our webinar. Uh, we have uh, two of our uh, professors here who are going to speak about our Master of Music in Music Management and our MBA with a concentration in Music Management. Obviously you're here because you're thinking this uh, one of the programs might be a good fit for yourself and certainly they're gonna delve in to a lot of detail about the program, um, what some of their uh, current and past students are doing, a lot of the exciting opportunities associated um, with this particular career path. Um, for the Grad Admissions Office, just want to do one or two little quick um, things before we get started. First, I want to make sure you know um, we want you to be able to be hands-free to just kick back and enjoy the webinar, take in the information. So want you to know two things. First, we are going to make this uh, presentation available in its entirety. The recording is going to go up on our YouTube channel and you will receive an email with it usually about a week after the event takes place. So keep that in mind too. And then also, um, whether you just want to be able to refer back to some of the information that's on the slides or there's something that you see that you think might be helpful for yourself further down the road, um, we do have the PowerPoint presentation that you're going to be viewing available right now for down download under the handout section on the GoToWebinar screen. So if at any point you want to download this for yourself, keep it on your computer to refer back to later, obviously you're more than welcome to do so. Um, lastly, while these webinars are intended to be convenient, a really good way to get a lot of information in a very short span of time so you can get back to your daily life. Um, there is no substitute for coming to campus, getting the face-to-face -face interaction, getting to see our beautiful campus here, the surrounding area. If you're not from this area, you're not familiar with our campus. Um, so looking a little bit further ahead, um, just wanted to let you know that on Sunday, November 6th, we're going to be having a graduate open house and that's going to include uh, these programs as well. So I wanted to make sure you knew that if um, you are interested, if you like what you hear, you want to look into the program further, get the chance to talk to a faculty member or another uh, member of the department, we would encourage you to come out uh, for that open house as well. And there's lots of information on our website about registering for the event and coming for that particular open house. But just wanted to make sure I threw that out there uh, so you could save that information and hopefully join us for the event. Um, so obviously you're not here to hear me babble on uh, you're here because you want to learn more about these programs. Um, so I'm actually going to pass it over um, to Professor David Philp uh, and also Professor Stephen Marconi who are going to talk about the program. So guys, uh, take it away. Okay, thank you, Brian. So we're here talking about the Master of Music and Music Management and the MBA with a concentration in Music Management. I'm Steve Marconi and I'm here with... Professor David Kirk Philp. You may call me Professor David Kirk Philp. Yes. So we're going to try to uh, give you in a short capsule uh, what these two programs really concentrate on, and then hopefully you'll have uh, some questions at the end, and we'll try to be brief, but we'll also try to be pretty much uh, um, pretty conclusive as well. So next slide, please. Well, I guess Brian told you this is, of course, William Patterson University, and we are just 20 miles from New York City. And it is, uh, I just looked at 57 degrees up here today on a beautiful Friday afternoon. And the campus looks beautiful with the leaves turning, doesn't it, David? It's the most gorgeous campus in the history of the United States. Wow, that's saying something. Anyway, we have about 300 acres, so you may think the word William Patterson does have to do with the statesman William Patterson, but uh, some people confuse us as being in downtown Patterson, which we are not. We have about a 300-acre campus located, or maybe about five miles or so from Patterson. And it is a state university, as we say here, and especially on the graduate level, we ensure small classes and individual attention. And to tell you the truth, we're actually not on campus at the moment as That's we give right. this. We're actually in New York City in uh, an executive's office of Atlantic Records. So we're going to get in a little bit into the excursions that we do for MBA students in the music management field. And we'll talk more about that as we go. Yes. Okay, the music management master's program and a master of music and music management is housed in the music department. And it is a very much an all-inclusive department with uh, just about any undergraduate program you could name outside of music therapy 
and we have four graduate degrees here, not only music management, but also jazz studies, music education, and the second jazz study one is actually in uh, arranging. So we have jazz studies in performance and jazz studies in arranging. And it's a, in many campuses, it could be a school of music that's just it's just the way the structure of William Patterson University is that we are all departments under uh, four colleges. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a very busy place. There's a lot of variety of music making, and there's also a lot of variety of music business going on here as well, which we'll get to. <laughs> The, the program overall, whether you're here for the uh, Masters of Music or the MBA, is a program that is pretty concentrated and does cover quite a bit. The class, and we'll see uh, the curriculum shortly, but the classes do cover everything from general overview of the industry to social media. We talk about radio promotion. We talk about entrepreneurship. You also are going to get general business classes that are going to give you that foundation that are going to help you when you get into the industry. We have it on this slide, you'll actually see on the left, it's a screenshot. We came to, and we're actually, coincidentally, we're here again today. We were at the Warner Music Group last year, and one of our MBA students who graduated in last December, uh, she went by the name of G Rockstar, who's now working for the Warner Music Group as a temp, sent us this, uh, copied us on this uh, Instagram post, uh, last year and um, we do a lot and we also include internships and internships are a big part of the degree so we're close to New York you saw a couple slides before 20 miles from New York City that's the hub of the music and entertainment industry and we're completely involved with that and that's why William Patterson is a great place to be uh, yes and the program itself is really a combination of the school of business and the music department and uh, the core courses in the music business itself. All right, we have a number of program highlights here that we have uh, sort of bullet pointed for you. Uh, we do have not only Professor Philip and me, but we have a list of <laughs> adjunct faculty that work in the industry. For instance, uh, Professor Aaron Van Dyne, who is a business manager of CPA, and his clients include Dave Matthews and Kiss, uh, Three Doors Down, Charlie Puth. Uh, so he's able to bring to the classroom exactly what's happening today. I mean, he's totally involved in the music industry. So uh, that that's one example. Carl Guthrie is a an attorney, uh, music business attorney, or what we call an entertainment attorney, and again, an expert in the industry. We also have this uh, relationship with various people in the music industry that we have bring them in as visiting experts every year. And they don't come in and just sit there with a cup of uh, coffee and say, what do you guys want to hear? But they actually teach courses in both the undergraduate and the graduate level, where David uh, or me or anyone actually teaching the course will give them a subject that they are obviously experts in and they will teach the course that night and give their perspective. Um, internships are all over the industry and all over the city, but we do have this relationship with Warner Music, so we are uh, what we call priority uh, interns. Uh, our students get priority to internships in the Warner Music Group itself. We also have every spring semester, the spring semester starts middle of January, goes through the middle of May. We have what we call music industry lecture series. What's the official name of that? Music industry seminar. Music industry seminar. And that's where one of our adjunct faculty members, Steve Leeds, who's a VP of talent relations for Sirius XM Radio, brings in people that he's connected with in the industry. This is five Tuesday nights from 8 to 10, and they come in and they talk about the industry, and there's ample time in that period for students to come in and ask questions. Past people we've had include L.A. Reid, who's the head of Epic Records, uh, Julie Greenwald, who's the head of Atlantic Records. Last year we had a number of authors. We've had some great guests. We have 
M&M's manager has been there in the past. So that's a great, yeah, Paul Rosenberg, that's a great thing that we have going on every spring. We also have, we'll show you a slide in a little bit, a radio show that happens every Wednesday night, in which Dr. Marconi and I interview members of the industry. And again, all this stuff uh, from our faculty to the industry seminar to the radio show, it keeps us on our toes as well. You want to have faculty who are in the industry, who are connected to the industry, because the industry is, the music and entertainment industry is one subject that's different from, let's say, accounting, in which it's different and it changes every week. And if you have faculty who are up with the changes and are embracing that change, it's going to help you that much more. If you have faculty who are kind of stuck in the year, you know, 1999, it's not going to help you as much. So we're very much into that. Then obviously we mentioned the entrepreneurship and we understand that most of the artists or most of the students are involved in DIY careers. So we're very we attuned to that. We love DIY people who have the initiative to find out about the industry that they're trying to get into and to, and want to learn. It'd be like a sponge, whether it's undergraduate or graduate level. So we really emphasize you doing this yourself, and we sort of give you the guide and the tools to do it. Uh, along with, you know, we're talking here about everything that we offer. It's really a networking possibility uh, for the student that's really assertive. So we do conferences. Uh, we do a uh, trip to Nashville for a large conference in May. This is going to be the second year we're doing that, but we always take advantage of all the conferences in the New York City area and the suburbs as well. And again, as we stated earlier, this is in conjunction with our uh, renowned Gasaka School of Music. No, School of Business, excuse me. <laughs> Here's a slide. These are the guests that we had last year as part of that. We call it the Music Management Seminar Lecture Series. So you can take a look at that. And again, you'll have access to this PowerPoint, so you'll be able to download it and spend more time with each slide and really absorb these kind of things. Because as Dr. Marconi said, right now you are a sponge. Okay, facilities. Well, best thing to do is to go to the website and look up music department and see uh, everything that goes on because there's a, an array of various uh, of pictures that show various parts of the building. But Shea Center is really where we do the music making. Huntsco Hall, which is in actually in about um, 50 yards from Shea Center, is where we have all our classrooms. It's constantly being, it's, it's uh, presently being renovated. Uh, we also have additional practice rooms in an, another hall, uh, not too far from Shea, and our Center for Electroacoustic Music uh, is in Hobart Hall. So we have spread out into four buildings, uh, and uh, that's actually a feather in our cap because we have become uh, so comprehensive that uh, we just needed more space. Degree programs, okay. This is the uh, slide that shows you the actual courses for the Master of Music in Music Management. And you take actually three courses that everyone else basically in the graduate programs at the university in the Department of Music take a research technique course so that you be ready to do a thesis. Uh, a music technology course, which really centers on what you do as someone who's in the music business now, not someone who is, an, um, let's say, a composer or something. And then we have a grad seminar where you have a seminar with all the other grad students and the other programs that are uh, in the department. And then your major concentration is exactly what uh, Professor Philp said. We not only cover the entire industry in the survey course, but we also then go back and give you courses in very specific areas that are important for you to, um, you know, to get ahead. And there's a entertainment law course, of course, and there's the entrepreneurship course. There is the course that is basically that uh, music seminar course is titled differently on the graduate level then you uh, have electives and you have to do a master's thesis. The internship, one internship is required in this degree, 
but as you see under MUSI 6000, there's a music elective of three credits. Normally students do two internships. They do one for their elective and they do one uh, as required. This program certainly can be done very easily in two years. I've had students that uh, had someone come actually from uh, one of the islands in the Caribbean and she did summer, fall, spring, summer and she uh, completed her degree. Uh, next then you see the co-requisites from the Kasakas College of Business which uh, again you have a choice of some courses but they are the general business courses. We are finding more and more that the industry is looking for people with analysis courses, with data courses, with being able to do stat, uh, those types of things, financial and managerial accounting, because the industry has gotten so data driven that the um, it's really become a requisite for someone to to really be able to analyze, read and analyze data. A few notes about this. What we were just looking at here, this is for the Masters of Music program, including the Master's Thesis. For the MBA program, it's 48 credits. It's not 36 credits like you see here because you're taking additional business well, courses. Credits of business courses. Right. Correct. And there's no thesis required for the MBA program. Right. Correct. Right. And just for a part of the admissions requirement, Master of Music just required a GRE. The MBA, unless you come in with over a 3.4, you will have to uh, take the GMATs or the GMATs. Right. And here's the faculty. Again, we, we brought all these pe people up. Uh, if you look at the picture. It's actually true. It's a picture of us. Yes. You see Dr. Marconi is the one sort of uh, the lowest person right, in, in, lowest. in height, but not lowest in stature. I was, Shadow on my head. I know, but but he's probably That's the best looking in there. Exactly, <laughs> Professor Van Dyne, Aaron Van Dyne, who we mentioned, is on your right uh, with the goatee. Uh, I'm on your far left. I'm I would consider myself very attractive. And then be <laughs> between you and I, that's George Daster who teaches our yeah. uh, PR course. And there you have uh, just a short synopsis of our biography. Uh, and uh, David and I, the two full-timers, as we said, we want adjuncts that are in the business and as you can see by their, just by their little dossier there, that the other four are in the, uh, constantly in the industry. In terms of applying for this, uh, one thing that's important to know is in terms of the audition process. If you're going for your MBA, the concentration in music management, you do not need to audition. You don't need, even need to use that word don't anywhere. Have to be a musician. Don't have to be a musician at all. If you're going for your master's of music and you had an, you got a music degree in your undergraduate program. Yes, you earned either a major or a minor in music, then the audition is waived uh, for the uh, master of music in music management. But if you did not major or minor in music and you want to get your master's of music, you do need to audition on your main instrument. Correct. Okay. And then obviously you have to apply to the university as well. And then there's a separate application with the music department. And this is again for the master of music. You also have to apply to the music department right. as well. You do the same thing for the MBA. It would just be instead of going to the music department, you would be going through the business school for the and apply at the MBA program. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, this is this is just plain ruthless self promotion. Publicity. Yes, That's right. The two of us wrote a book that will be coming out approximately January 2017. Right. It's in its sixth edition. It's called Managing Your Band, and uh, I put out the first five editions. Now we have uh, we co-authored the sixth edition. That's right. And we actually uh, talk about utilizing opportunities that the, that cover image of that microphone was taken last year when we visited if the Atlantic Records in New York City has their own recording studio and that is a microphone from that recording studio I took that picture and that picture was cool enough that it ended up becoming the cover of our book oh. so there this radio is, show right yeah 
we mentioned earlier, our radio show every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Look at the upper left, musicbiz101wp.com. You can go there to find out more about the radio show. Every radio show we record becomes a podcast that is available on iTunes, available on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio as well. The best two places to go are sound, uh, SoundCloud and iTunes. And you can really get a good sense of who we're talking to, what we, the two of us are like since we are the full-time faculty. A lot of places you might not really get to know their personalities and if you'll click with them. So you can hear us there. You can also go to musicbiz101wp.com, sign up for our newsletter. You would get two emails every week, one on Wednesdays, which tells you who our guest is going to be that evening for the radio show, and one on Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, and that email, which is, comes out probably about 49 weeks of the year, is information about the music industry that's going on that you should know. And they were collating, curating for you. So sign up at musicbiz101wp.com. We brought this up already. We're going to Nashville. Oh, I'm back. And if you're interested, you can sign up for this uh, as a non-matriculated student, even if you have not uh, been accepted yet, if you're just still in the application process, this is still an opportunity for, again, for you to get a sense of what the students are like, what our classes are like, what the music business is like. So undergrad or grad. Undergrad or grad, right. And this picture has a mix of both undergraduate students and grad students. And here's all our contact info. Uh -huh. Everything you wanted to know about applying at William Patterson University. And you have our email addresses. You also, in the bottom, have our socials. You have uh, where you can find us on Facebook. As we were talking, I sent out a tweet, a picture of Dr. Marconi with the screen here. It's a gorgeous picture. You'll love it. You, if you check us out on Instagram, you'll see a picture of all of us here at Atlantic Records today. And we mentioned sign up for the newsletter. And this is our last slide. So we are wow. done. We are ready for questions. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. I'm going to keep the uh, the mic uh, live for you guys as well as we go through. Um, just a reminder for anybody that joined us late, um, we are going to make this uh, presentation available in its entirety on our YouTube channel uh, for grad admissions. We usually post it up about a week after it takes place, and we'll be emailing everybody. So look for that as well if you did miss any of the earlier slides. Also, uh, right under the handouts tab there, there's the opportunity to download this PowerPoint presentation in its entirety. If you want to refer back to any of this contact information, uh, any of the social media uh, links there, uh, certainly feel free to do so. If you have any questions now, I would encourage you to type them into the chat box there on the GoToWebinar screen. Um, we'd be happy to uh, answer them as they come in. Um, there were uh, a handful of questions that came through while uh, we were going through the presentation, so I'll just start uh, right off. And again, if you have any others, feel free to chime in and type away. Um, uh, obviously, this is a, a specific specific degree. You guys talked about uh, the importance of New York City, um, the many opportunities that are there. Are most or all of the internships uh, that students are generally getting in New York City? Are there some uh, locally here in the suburbs of New Jersey, or is New York City where it's at for our grad students? Well, normally a student comes to William Patterson because we are 20 miles from New York City, and those that go through the program will, uh, hopefully they'll have that initiative that they want to take the giant leap and uh, take advantage of New York City. So the answer is out of uh, 99 uh, people who want internships, uh, excuse me, out of 100, 99 of them will want to go to New York City. We do have uh, various alums and we have made contacts with various businesses in the New Jersey area. Some of them do very, very well. They just are not in New York City. And we have uh, placed students there. But the overwhelming majority of students will want to uh, internship in New York City. Now, we probably have, an in have had interns in just about every major business in the city, not only the record business or the recording business, which many people will think of, uh, Sony and Warner and Atlanta and um, Universal, Atlantic Shoe, excuse me, and Universal, but also management companies, um, Live Nation, the content promoter, various booking agencies, uh, various recording uh, studios that um, 
uh, hire people to do, you know, all the other work that you don't see going on. Uh, so just about every place, publicity, PR places, internet companies, publishing, did you mention publishing, for sure, uh, just about every walk because everything is here. And then obviously with grad programs, it's all about jobs. Uh, so one student asked what type of jobs are available uh, for a grad student that completes this degree, whether it's the Master of Music or the, uh, the MBA concentration in music management. Well, it's interesting because if we find a grad student coming to the end of the career and going to do an internship and really doesn't know what they want to do, then we try to get them an internship in an all-service company. It may be a small, what we call, entertainment company that has every piece of the fragmented industry in it. So somebody might get exposure to publicity, might get exposure to artist development, have exposure to A&R, have exposure to the whole digital world. And many times they'll come back to me in the middle of their internship and they'll say, well, these are the things I know I don't want to do. So many times we can get someone who really doesn't know what they want to do yet, uh, sort of eliminate a lot of things that they um, might have thought they wanted to do, but in their internship uh, have realized that that's really not their cup of tea. And grads uh, recently are working now in, for example, New York City, Columbia Records, Sony Music Entertainment, Viacom. I actually went through the program and was a graduate, and I worked for the Universal Music Group for 16 years. Warner here. Yeah. Warner right. Music Group. So we have uh, do have people all over the place. Yeah, AGI. And you can actually go to our website, and when you go to the uh, music department website. Press alumni yeah. in uh, music, go to music management and hit the alumni button. And we try to keep track of most of our people, of course, not all of them, but we try to keep track of most of them. And you'll see the variety of, um, of jobs that they have. And Ticketmaster, too. Sure. Ticket, right, Tom. Right. And then um, we have one other question that came through, and I think I already know the answer to it because you referenced before that you're currently in an executive's office while you're doing this presentation. But are there uh, a number of industry networking opportunities for a student while they're going through these programs and, and while they're taking advantage of the city with you guys? Lots of industry networking opportunities, some that you pay for, some that don't cost a thing. For example, in New Jersey, northern New Jersey, there is a, a meetup of, I think it's called a music industry meetup that yeah. takes place in as locally as Clifton, New Jersey. That's a free thing. takes place maybe once a quarter. Uh, beyond that, we've gone to Nashville, which we mentioned earlier. That became a class. But that was a three-day event last year. This year it's going to be, uh, in 2017, it's going to be a four-day event. But that is all networking. The class that we built is about networking for students to make connections. Uh, we also, uh, yeah. like we mentioned, we've gone to NAM, which is a product show, music product show out in uh, Anaheim, California. More networking, 90,000 people go to that show. We've also... New Music Seminar. New Music Seminar, which right. is in New York City. Right, it's not happening. It's happened for many, many years, uh, but we've had students. And most of these times, students can work these conferences, too. So they don't have to pay for the fee, even if it's a small student fee. Uh, and that's great networking when you work for uh, a conference because you get to meet so many people and uh, you may impress someone. Yeah, volunteer opportunity for those things where it looks great on a resume. And then in, in our classes, we also talk about LinkedIn ad nauseum almost because LinkedIn is probably the best way for anybody to network and it's digital and you can network with people all over the world and we explain how you can do that in the right way so that it helps you professionally. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. At least as for right now, um, there are no other questions that have come through. Um, so just want to thank the both of you. I know, obviously, being in the city and running around, we appreciate you taking the time um, to go through this presentation. For our students who attended, we certainly hope that this was helpful and informative for you. Can't stress enough, if you want a great opportunity for a follow-up, we'd love for you to come and join us for our open house on Sunday, November 6th, which is going to be taking place from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, over in the University 
University Commons Ballroom. So certainly pencil that in somewhere. Make sure that you uh, register online through the Grad Admissions website. Um, and unless you guys have anything to add, um, we'll make sure we stick around for just a couple of minutes in case anybody else has any questions. Um, but that concludes the formal part of our presentation. Um, so for all of us here in the Grad Admissions Office, thank you again for taking time out of your Friday to join us. Uh, and gentlemen, thank you so much. The presentation was wonderful. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Brian. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye now.